So since you clicked on this video, you already know that uh, Parmigiana di Melanzane, or eggplant parm, is on the menu today. But you need to explain why I'm doing the cooking, because if I say it, nobody will believe me. So one day, when we had one of our big and usual Calabrian feast. And by big Italian feast, we mean Ava cooking from before the sunrise till late in the night for four days straight. And because I didn't have time, I asked to someone if he could help me to make this parmigiana. I was a little bit worried. My cousin Paola came uh, to me and she loves parmigiana like every Italian loves parmigiana. She came to me and asked, who made the parmigiana? And I said, why? She said, because this is the best parmigiana that I have ever, ever had in my life. And she wasn't the only person who came to me that day. Several of them came to me and said, oh, but the parmigiana was amazing. Oh, but the parmigiana is amazing. Oh, how you did the parmigiana? That's not the only parmigiana I made. I've made several since. So today, Ava asked me in a rare guest appearance as an Italian food cook. I'm going to cook a parmigiana today and share all of my secrets. Some that she doesn't even know. She doesn't know these secrets. I'm teaching her today. No, no, don't exaggerate. <laughs> Watch and learn, my dear. Watch and learn. <laughs> now, a word of warning. This video is not going to be how to make a quick and easy parmigiana. This is going to be how to make the absolutely best parmigiana that you possibly can the kind of Parmigiana that's so good that when you serve it to someone, they take a bite and they have like this moment of reflection where they realize that they've never had a real Parmigiana until this very moment. This is the best eggplant I've ever had. Okay, obviously to make an eggplant Parmigiana, we are going to need some eggplants. Now, these eggplants, frankly, are kind of horrible. First of all, they look like they've been run over by a truck. The biggest problem with these eggplants is the size. This is pretty much the best that a lot of people can get, which is why I'm using them today. These big guys are bred to be as huge and waterlogged as possible. I'm being a little conspiratorial here, but I think it's so that they are heavier so that they can charge you more money for them. Okay, so the first step is slicing the eggplants. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the eggplants about this thin. Now that we have a whole bunch of sliced eggplant, uh, we're gonna drain them. Now this is a step that's really important if you have big, wet eggplants like this. Like I can feel how wet these are. But honestly, I would recommend doing this step even if you have really good eggplants because the only thing it can possibly do is make them better. So it can't hurt. What I have here, this is like a pasta pot with one of these colander inserts, but you can also just use a big colander and put it in a bowl or something. And so what I'm gonna do is start layering the eggplant slices in here, just like this in a layer. And then for each layer, I'm gonna lightly salt them. The salt will help pull out all the extra moisture. And so we're gonna layer all of these and then let them sit for about an hour. I told you, this is not a quick and easy Parmigiana. It's the very first time Ava taught me this technique, I thought she was crazy. And your family's gonna think you're crazy too. They're gonna look at you, layering all these eggplant slices, sprinkling them with salt. They're gonna be like, what's wrong with daddy? Why has he lost his mind? Well, I guess you've noticed Something that's a little strange with dad. Daddy is doing the right things. Okay, we have our weird stack of eggplant slices, but we need to press them down. Maybe I put a bowl? I might make a mean parmigiana, but I still do have things to learn from Ava. Okay, we can let that sit. And in the meantime, we can prep the cheese. So I have my mozzarella here. Now mozzarella, unlike eggplants, is supposed to be wet. But when it comes to Parmigiana, water is the enemy. So what I'm gonna do to try to get rid of as much moisture as possible is drain the mozzarella. Are you picking up on a theme here? It's really important. I'm just gonna cut it up. And then I'm just gonna put it in a little strainer 
over a bowl and we'll let it sit while we do the rest of the eggplant prep. Actually, to be honest, I kind of have the opposite problem that I have with the eggplants in this fine country, which is that it's actually not really as wet as real <laughs> mozzarella should be. So my eggplants are too wet, my mozzarella is too dry, but just like with the eggplants, even if it's a little on the drier side, I would still recommend doing this because it can't hurt. We're trying to make the best Parmigiana, not the easiest one. So I'm gonna use every trick I got. If you were doing this in Italy with like really fresh mozzarella, you definitely need to do this step. Yes, because in Italy mozzarella has a waterfall of milk inside. Exactly. And that's what makes it yummy, but you do gotta get it out. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in the fridge and uh, uh, let it drain. They say that a watched eggplant never drains. But I got like an hour. <laughs> Harper, what are you doing? I gotta wait for the eggplants to drain. Are you watching Gordon Ramsay, Harper? That's not Gordon Ramsay. That's Guy Fieri. Eggplants have been draining for an hour. As you can see, there's not a lot of water in there. That water makes a difference. And also, if you look here, you can see all the water is coming out of the eggplants, which means that I can pat them dry with a paper towel as we go. And that gets rid of a lot of it. This means something. This is important. It's time to start frying our eggplant slices. There are times when you can skip frying with olive oil and instead fry with like vegetable oil. That time is not when you're trying to make the best Parmigiana of your life. Something very magical happens when you fry eggplants in extra virgin olive oil. So that's why I picked up this big old bottle of extra virgin olive oil. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and look for like, you know, the world's best, most expensive, imported olive oil. I know that that's hard to do when you're frying, but if you can use extra virgin olive oil, it'll make things so much better. I'll start filling up my frying pan here. You don't need a ton of oil, although you might have to add more as you go because these eggplant slices are pretty thin. And I'm gonna heat the olive oil over like medium high temperature. And while that's coming up to temperature, I'm gonna get my little frying station ready. You wanna see how I do my frying station? Harper. The thing I need is on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna use this to sort of lay out my eggplant after it fries. Some paper towels, do like that. These are awesome. A lot of people ask us about these. They're called kitchen tweezers, and I have never ever seen them in my life until I met Ava, and you see them in every Italian kitchen, and they are fantastic. Check out the link down below to where we got these. Okay, let's see if our oil is hot enough. I'm gonna take one slice of eggplant, see what happens. Oh, not even close. It's gotta start bubbling and frying as soon as you drop it in. Okay, let's try again. There we go. Now I'm just gonna put some of these in. Not too much. I wanna overcrowd it. And now the <laughs> longest part of the Parmigiana process has begun because we gotta fry all of these. And uh, this is what takes the time. And actually, come to think of it, this is when your family is gonna start thinking you're going crazy. Wait, what are you doing? You're gonna love it, Ronnie. What do you mean? You really love this. What are you doing? Every good thing in life comes with time. And frying. Always. So as they go, I just flip them every now and then. We want them to be kind of golden brown, kind of like that, a little bit more, but on both sides. And they do kind of continue to cook a little bit after you take them out. Be aware of that. You became an expert of parmigiana. Oh man, it doesn't take very many parmigiane to make before you become an expert because this takes a long time. And so you get a lot of practice and you do a lot of eggplant slices. So that's looking pretty good. It's curling up, but don't worry about that. 
I'm gonna put it right here. I highly recommend when you take one out, dropping a new one in right away because otherwise it's gonna take all day. Here we go, they're coming out. Yeah. Those eggplants right now are perfect also for pasta la norma. Yes, they're, it, learning how to fry eggplants is a really useful skill. The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, Volume 1, by Edward Gibbon, Chapter 1. So we're almost done with our first layer of eggplant here. Now, if for whatever reason you skipped the step of salting and draining the eggplants, like let's say you just have the world's best eggplants and you don't believe me that this makes them better, then I would sprinkle this layer with some salt. But I'm gonna skip it because they did pick up some salt from before and plus the sauce, which I'm gonna get to in a little bit, is plenty salty. Now what I'm gonna do is on this first layer, put down some paper towel, press it down. So we want them flat in the end. And while we keep uh, frying these eggplants, a quick word from today's video sponsor. So after spending six months in Italy, uh, coming back was kind of a shock because I forgot how expensive everything is. That's why we've started using Upside. Upside is a really cool cash back app. They've partnered with over 30,000 businesses across the US, plus 25,000 gas stations, in order to give you real cash back on actual purchases that you already make. It's super cool. You can pull up a map of wherever you are and you'll see all these different offers. You just tap on the offer, claim it, and then you just go and use your credit or debit card and you get actual cash back. This is real cash back. It's not points or anything, it's money that you can transfer into your bank account or through PayPal. If you want, you can even get the cash as an e-gift card. I don't wanna spoil anything, but for something later in the recipe, I needed some meat. I pulled up Upside and my local butcher that I already love going to was offering 6% cash back. I just claimed the offer, went and bought what I needed and got cash back. Upside really is the best cash back program out there. Users are earning three times more than other loyalty rewards programs, credit card cash, cashback programs. Plus, unlike other cashback apps, Upside never sells your personal information to third parties. We're all trying to save a buck and this is worth checking out. To get started, download the free Upside app. Use our promo code PASTAGRAMMER and get an extra 10% cashback on your first restaurant or grocery purchase. A big thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video and for making this rather involved Parmigiana a little bit more affordable. This concludes the reading of The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. Okay, and there is our last eggplant slice. The hard part's over, and now comes the fun part. Now it's assembly time. No, now it's preheat the oven time. 390 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition to my eggplant, of course, I need some Parmigiano cheese. I need my dry American mozzarella that didn't drain any water whatsoever. I need some basil and I need my sauce. Now, you can use a simple tomato sauce. But here's something I learned in Naples. If you ever go to Naples and you have an incredible Parmigiana and it blows you away, chances are they didn't use tomato sauce. They used ragu alla napolitana. This is actually technically not ragu alla napolitana, but it's Southern style ragu, it's very similar. Here's how I made it yesterday. I melted some lard, lard, not olive oil, this is ragu. Then I browned an absurd amount of meat, like too much meat, like enough meat that your spouse looks at you and says, honey, you have now completely lost your mind because this pot is just not big enough for all of this meat that you're trying to cook. And you have to say, sweetheart, I have this under control, and you do. Everything's gonna be all right. I used uh, pork ribs and pork sausages, but you can kind of use whatever you want. Pork belly would be good, beef. Then I added a basic ragu sofrito of celery, carrots, and onion. Cook that for a little bit. Then you add red wine. You let that simmer down for a bit. You let it reduce a little bit. Then you add the tomatoes. And that's when you look back at your spouse and you say, see, the pot is big enough, honey. The pot is big enough. Also some tomato paste, some basil. Then you cook that down until the meat is like totally cooked, super, super tender. You take the meat out 
and what you have left with is incredible southern style ragu. And this is what takes your parmigiana up to the absolute top level. I'm so happy. This is gonna be so good. So we start with just a little bit of sauce. Not a lot, not a full layer, just enough to grease the wheels. To do what? Grease the wheels. You don't have that expression in Italy? And now it kind of works like a lasagna. We're gonna do layers of eggplant and you want them to overlap a little bit. Don't be afraid to do this. Flatten that baby down. Now, my order of operations is eggplant, sauce, basil, mozzarella, parmigiana. You got that? More or less. It doesn't really matter that much. It all gets mixed together, but... Now, the sauce is kind of an art because, as I've said over and over again, we don't want a bunch of excess liquid in our parmigiana. You want enough in there to cook the eggplants further and to mix all the flavors together. But one of the big problems I have with a parmigiana that isn't made well is it just gets way too soupy and watery. So I tend to go a little lower on the sauce quantity. So you are stingy with the sauce. I am stingy with the sauce. I'm gonna add some little pieces of basil. You wanna make sure that every bite has some basil in it. This is important. Mozzarella time. I don't go crazy with the mozzarella. Are you making a light parmigiana? I'm not, I'm not. I'm my parmigiana, this is how I do it. No, my reason being that I like to have more of higher ratio of eggplant and tomato goodness. So like you should be able to see the eggplants through it. Where I do go crazy is with the parmigiana. You just wanna add Pretty much as much as you can get in there. There is no such thing as too much parmigiana. Because parmigiano isn't an ingredient. Exactly. It's a state of mind. Bravo. It's a way of life. And now we just keep going with another layer of eggplants. Uh, this is probably just like ridiculous OCD on my part, but I like to alternate which direction I overlap the eggplants. Do I sound as crazy as I'm sounding to myself right now? Yeah. You ever look at something when it's crazy and then you look at it in another way and it's not crazy at all? Oh, I have Once again, press it down. Otherwise, when, you, when you're done with the parmigiana, it'll be like, it'll be like a dome. Time for more sauce. Okay, so we are putting our fifth and final layer of eggplants on. We obviously, this is the top. We're not gonna put mozzarella or anything on it. I'm just gonna finish it off. Here, you wanna go a little bit more with the sauce because you wanna completely cover it. Corner to corner, make sure all the eggplants covered. Now, we finish everything with an even more generous grating Parmigiano. This is a very important step, not just for flavor, but because this is what will get kind of crispy on the top. It looks uh, good. That's a pretty awesome looking Parmigiana, if I may say so myself. You may notice that I have quite a bit of eggplant left over here. That is a good problem to have. Trust me, I've been there. It is way better to have some extra than to run out on your like second or third layer. Here's what you do with this leftover eggplants. You take a little salt, lightly sprinkle them, and you pick one up and you eat it. And I don't want to tell you if you dip them in sauce. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. Actually, this is a really good way to see how your Parmigiana is gonna taste. This Parmigiana is gonna be terrible. Ava, you should just let me eat it. Cover this with foil, and we are gonna bake this covered for probably about 20 to 30 minutes, and then we'll take the top off and bake it until the top is nice and crispy. It looks invitante, Arthur. Inviting? Yeah. If it tastes half as good as it smells right now, this is gonna be a darn good Parmigiana. The longer you can let this sit and rest, preferably overnight, the better. 
I think this is probably going to be the one thing today where I'm not going to do what you would need to do to have the best Parmigiana because we do need to eat it today. I'm going to try and let this sit for as long as I can possibly resist. But then we got to dig in. One hour later. Literally can't wait any longer. Oh yeah. What do you think, Ava? I think that it's a good looking Parmigiana. All right, now let's see how it tastes. This smells good, doesn't it? It smells very good, yes. Bon what appetito. appetito. Did I live up to my reputation? This parmigiana can be served in every Italian houses because it's too good. I thought you were gonna say it could be served in the best restaurant in Napoli. <laughs> Not in every the, Italian houses. Because they don't do the parmigiana as good as you did. That's true, actually. Home cooking's better. So thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate Martin. the compliment. We had a good teacher. I did have a good teacher. <laughs> did anything I I did while making it like go against what you would do? Usually I use uh, normal tomato sauce because the rugu is something that actually they use just in Napoli. But I need to say that if you are crazy enough to try the what do you call it? The no punches pulled. Parmigiana. I'll let you wrap your brain around that one for a minute. If you give this a try, please let us know. Tag us in a picture on Instagram or Facebook at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see your attempt. No, not attempt. Your success. Your victory. If they follow what you did, yes, it will be their victory. I shared all my tricks, everything I know about how to make Parmigiana today. Before we go, a quick shout out to a young pasta grammarian in action. We've received several pictures of his, uh, his Italian masterpieces. Most recently, he cooked an amazing looking carbonara. Bravo! Well done, it looks fantastic. If you wanna become a pasta grammarian, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, follow us on social media, and definitely send us a picture if you try any of the recipes. You can't see it underneath my apron, but I'm wearing one of my beloved Ava Fork Twirl t-shirts. Check out our merch store down below to help support the show. All right guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.